1980s action films were not a particularly friendly genre for women. As far as female heroes go, there's Ripley and Sarah Connor. And did I mention Ripley? Writing about Die Hard 29 years after the fact in The New Yorker, Richard Brody astutely observes, there are no female officers involved in the mission, and for that matter, no female criminals. He's not completely accurate. Attention, whoever you are, this channel is reserved for emergency calls only. But he does have a point. But overlooking, you know, like the entire rest of the film, Bonnie Bedelia manages to pack a lot into the role of Holly McLean. Modern commentary sadly seems to focus on her appearance, hairstyle, and shoulder pads in particular, but let's see what you think of that business casual jumper in 30 years. In fact, the pseudo-masculine fashion is indicative of the world Holly's playing in, in case fending off the usual bullshit and holding her family together without John didn't make that clear in the intro. 25 years before leaning in and having it all, Holly does all this in a real deal director level job and gets Takagi's unsolicited praise for her efforts. She was made for the business. Tough as new. When Hans crashes the party, Holly's the one trying to keep her boss from outing himself, and as the camera work suggests, is the obvious successor following his demise. After Tony's body shows up in the elevator, you can almost see the gears in Holly's head turning, looking for opportunities as she realizes her husband is working to foil Han's plan. She is easily as unafraid of Hans as John is. What idiot put you in charge? You did, when you murdered my boss. And for my money is the better adversary. John does manage to screw things up royally for Hans, but he can only manage it through a boatload of explosions and collateral damage. Holly needs only her mind to pick apart the more obvious flaws. Unless you like it messy, I'd start bringing us in groups to the bathroom. Holly's negotiation prowess is further highlighted by Ellis's swaggering ineptitude. Hans. Bobby. And the literal comic relief of the LAPD and FBI. Once Hans kidnaps her in earnest, she refuses to be handled roughly and continues to needle him. After all your posturing, all your little speeches, you're nothing but a common thing. This is also our first serious eyeful of Holly's cleavage, and at the risk of damning with faint praise, it's commendable the movie manages to go an hour and 53 minutes without obviously playing up the sex appeal of its leading lady. This sexuality as she cracks Hans' composure with a simple insult is also telling. What's that line again? Men's greatest fear is that women will laugh at them? For me, Holly's best moment comes in the climactic finale. She starts out with genuine fear, but as Hans' gun comes off her and the laughter starts, she, hearkening back to her scenes at the party earlier and backed up by what I think is some pretty unambiguous camera work, susses out her husband's intentions and is ready to jump as John caps Hans and Eddie. Yes, he does shout Holly, but no, she jumps because she knows what's coming. As McTiernan says on the audio commentary, adding the business of Holly understanding what he's going to do and making the break at the right moment was the filmmaker's effort to turn the gun to the love interest's head Hollywood cliche on its ear. After that, eh. Uh... Holly punching Richard Thornburg is supposed to be our girl power moment, but the Holly of the previous two hours would be far too savvy to commit assault on live TV and would have the self-confidence to simply stonewall him. Whatever Holly McLean intro to Al, you might ask? Or that watch? All in good time, my friends. I'm Cosmo Catalano. Until next time, yippee ki motherfucker.